Hello and welcome back, Eddie Rodosovich, Bob Prisbillo, back from uh, Devon Park. Finally, you're, you're done. The season done. is over. <laughs> welcome back to the final stickball, uh, I, I, I guess, end of the season stickball. There's still going to be a lot to discuss here over the next couple of weeks. Had some transfer portal news on uh, Monday. We'll get to that in a second, but we want to wrap up everything that is for an unprecedented fourth consecutive national championship for Patty Gasso and the Oklahoma Sooners. That is six of eight. Seven of 11, if you want to extend it all the way back uh, over a decade now, uh, the dominance continues for an Oklahoma softball program that is obviously the leader of the pack, and uh, they get it done over Texas. A 2-0 sweep in the championship series. Didn't know if they were going to be able to do it in two games. Didn't even know if they were going to be playing in the championship series, going all the way back to uh, getting beat by Florida, which was a surprise, and then you fall behind in the first, uh, or I guess the elimination semifinal game, and... uh, Lo and behold, a fourth consecutive national title for a uh, senior group that, as we had discussed here on the program, uh, right here on the Soonerscoop.com YouTube channel, just in terms of a senior class that goes out on top, the most, I, I, I think you can say, the most decorated senior class in the history of college athletics. Yeah, I mean, you hear Patty Gasso talk about it last Thursday. I've never had to be at this podium talking about a loss for the final game. That's insane. <laughs> it's That's incredible. Ridiculous. It's incredible. Like, it's tears of joy. It's sure. never tears of, you know, heartbreak or how it all shook out. But yeah, because of the rain and because of the schedule, we didn't get to do our championship series preview show. Right. right. Where I was going to say, you know, tech, you know, Texas will win Wednesday and then OU will win Thursday, Friday. Like how does Texas not win Wednesday? Yeah. They get the day off. OU is emotionally drained. And then one swing. T.R. Jennings, two-run homer in the first inning, basically just lets you know this series is almost over before it starts. It was unbelievable. And then you, I, I think that you got to start when you're talking about Oklahoma and particularly over the final three games of the season, that final Florida game, as well as the two. Uh, and, and even going back into, I, I really, truly, the Super Regional and maybe even the first couple uh, rounds of games in uh, Oklahoma City, Kelly Maxwell, the most outstanding player of the uh, College World Series up at Oklahoma City, and she was fantabulous. She was absolutely dominant. It was a different version of Jordy Ball, right? I mean, Patty rode Jordy to the 2023 National Championship, using her every single time she could. Kelly had a different style, but just the intern- like in- internally, she just felt something. You know, they talked about letting go, being free, stop worrying about the haters, and they were quite Quite, Quite a, a few. And you can right. actually start to hear it in her voice, yeah. how much this year has really taken a toll on her. And it's like, I, you just got to drop it and just be who you are. You've been one of the best pitchers in college softball for years and years. But what's that next level? We all wondered. We've said it in February, March, April. like, do they have that pitcher that can get to the next level? Is it Nicole May? Is it Kirsten Deal? Is it Maxwell in her final uh, trip, final chance to try to get – to this stage, and it absolutely was. It started with the Bruins, with just a ridiculous performance where you had no idea one nothing was going to be the final. It's going to be a throwback to softball games of 15, 20 years ago, and just the heart and the guts against you know Florida. The 267 pitches in two games, insane. From game two of Florida, game one of Texas. Just, I mean, just so many memories that people will remember for a long, long time. I thought it was really cool to uh, kind of the angle that you took going into, I believe the the second game of the, uh, the championship series, just in terms of leaning on Kelly Maxwell, the one person really, truly outside of the freshman who we'll get to in a second that had never been there before. Like she was the final one looking from that starting lineup, really, truly outside of Ella Parker and uh, uh, Cassidy Pickering, as far as players that had, you know, this dominant program, was being led by a single person that hadn't really been to that stage before, hadn't been to the national championship game. And you get it. You get like that that hunger. I mean, it's hard to be hungry if you're Jada Coleman, T.R. Jennings, Kinsey Hanson, when you're going for four. Like, there's an extra level of internal determination. But for someone that's never been there or someone that's never had one, and the way Patty would mention it, like, Kelly's never been to this stage. She's never been this far. And her competing at this spot of the – WCWS means the world to us. And you could see 
what it meant to Kelly, just pushing herself to levels clearly she's never been before and getting the results that obviously this is why she came to OU. You had mentioned the uh, 267 pitches that Kelly Maxwell had thrown leading into that second game, the clincher. And I, I think that a lot of us were like, yeah, just roll her out there again. But it wasn't Kelly Maxwell. It was a uh, host of players. Didn't think that Carly Keeney would be looking at uh, to be the person in the circle to uh, kick kick that game off. They end up pitching five different pitchers in the championship game in the clincher against Texas. And, you know, I think it was Patty Gasol after the game that basically said this this went exactly how we planned. As much as we planned, and it was fun. That's the other, like, all, talk about all the stressful moments going against Florida and maybe going into the first game against Texas. Second game sound like, we know we've got you. We're going to do this, and you're still not going to be able to beat it. I think that's what some Texas fans are like, man, they really toyed with us. <laughs> they brought out pitchers three, four, and five, and there's still nothing we could do. And I still, I mean, that's why I wrote about it Friday morning. The biggest out of the game is Peyton Monticelli. Are you kidding me? Bases loaded in the third inning. A and third of an inning, and she has the biggest out. <laughs> the biggest out of the game, you go to her, and she rises up to the challenge, and you hear the excitement in her voice when I got to talk to her on, on the field during the postgame celebration and how she's excited to be here the next two years. So I let, let you know that even though she didn't throw a lot of innings, she's pumped to be part of the building blocks of what's going to be happening here from 2025 going forward but yeah just so many little moments where patty pressed the right button and i don't still don't even know what to say about what happened with mia scott you don't want to put it all on her but i still have no idea how you explain that sixth inning a massive massive out at that moment of the game it felt like the momentum was headed back over to the texas dugout and you know, Oklahoma is able to uh, really do what they've done for the last decade, really find ways to win a uh, softball game in the most meaningful ways. It was also kind of cool throughout the uh, the postseason, really, uh, particularly in Oklahoma City, was uh, the emergence of some freshmen, Ella Parker, Cassidy Pickering, absolutely dynamic. And it, it's kind of fun when you're talking about a senior class that's going out on top. They got a little bit of help from the freshmen. They did time and time again throughout the course of the season. Then would it carry over? To the postseason, absolutely it did, where sometimes the seniors needed the freshmen to show them how to relax again, how to enjoy the game, come up with some really big hits. We all know about the scare that Ella had against Florida. Sure. Both of them, Skylar Wallace and Ella Parker, down for a couple minutes, not knowing if either one would return. They both come back. Ella hits the game-tying uh, single there in the sixth inning before Jada Coleman has her moment in the eighth. But, yeah, you see the foundation – is there it is still just mind just staggering to think that there's only eight returners coming back and so when when patty said she's excited about coaching again sure she I has, was, and she i, I said think that that. that's like an, a notable thing because i could you could see like leading into uh the championship game or into the championship series everything that's said about these seniors how much they've been to the program I think after the game, it was like, okay, what's the ne the next question is, is Patty Gasso going to be back? Yes. I think there were the way she would talk about Jen Rocha and JT, her son, just all the credit in the world to them. Like, is she kinda, laying the groundwork? Yeah. A little bit? Is she giving us little hints that this is where we're going? And then she's pretty adamant following the uh, press conference Thursday. No, I'm, I'm sticking around. There, there's no, no worries about that. And it's just, you know, it's just such a different vibe, right? Because you're maybe trying to not massage egos, but you're dealing with all the personalities of all these seniors. And a lot of that's off the field. And now it's going to be get back to coaching on the field. You're going to sure. have all these, as, as you said, they come in girls and they leave as women. And so now you got this next crop and trying to see what, what happens there. And you, But you also know, as I'm sure we'll get into, transfer portal is going to be huge for OU. And then again, Call your shot, whoever Patty wants to go after. Very hard for them to say say no. To, that first call will be, is is this a prank? And then sure. once you get over it, then it'll be like, how quickly can I get to Norman and try to make this happen? It's insane to think, uh, you know, even somebody like a Kenzie Hansen, and I think the, the quote was put out there after the game that she had arrived on campus underage. I mean, she was literally 17, couldn't even sign her uh, letter of intent papers. And now she graduates twenty or you know six years later at twenty three years old. She is going to be returning. That was something that you put out after from the uh, post game show. Her and T R A Jennings, as well as uh, one Carly. more, right? Carly Carly, yep. Carly Keeney coming back to uh, 
be uh, GAs, which is going to be weird for them. But there's going to be a important, I think, for a, particularly a bunch of the players that played a role on this team going into that GA role next year because there are so many new faces to the program. Avery Hodge played a big, a big role in uh, getting Oklahoma to a fourth consecutive national championship. And then the news comes out on Monday that, well, I guess we got to go back to even Saturday, the celebration over at Love's Field. There were two notable absences. Avery Hodge and Quincy Lilio uh, were not there. Yep. On Monday, it comes out. They're both headed into the transfer okay. portal as well as SJ Guerin. It was the surprise. I think that was probably, at least for me, that was a, a surprise to see Avery Hodge's name. Yes, it was, because I thought the way that she had performed after the scary incident with Alina Torres, sure. that almost gets forgotten because there's so many things that happened after that Bruins game. Basically but, got hit in the face in the yeah. first game at Oklahoma City, right, with the, with the, the second softball. Game with the the second pop, game, yeah. With, with the pop fly, loses it in the sun, smashes her glasses. You hear about bleeding in the eye, like mm. what in the world has happened? And Hodge, you know, maybe a little overwhelmed initially, but against Florida and against Texas, she was outstanding. Sure. Both defensively and with the bat. And I think that's where, you know, she's silenced a lot of people, including myself, <laughs> but it's how well she was able to handle that type of stage. And, and maybe that, you know, gives you momentum. Is like, I'm never going to, like, my stock's never going to be higher than is at, at this sure. moment. And I don't know if she feels she was, you know, treated wrong, you know, uh, wrong, uh, wrongly during this season, platooning with Torres at second base throughout the course of the year. But if there's any sort of feeling like that, it's like I can go see what's out there. I know what I feel I'm worth based off of what I just did. I can see, you know, what type of land, uh, type of landing spot I could possibly get. Let's see if I get these numbers right. Eight players returning, eight freshmen eight coming freshmen. in. That's up to 16. So now you have five portal spots open. And like you said, I think Oklahoma has a pretty good uh, product to offer, especially when you can bring somebody into Love's Field. Talk to JT Gasso about that this morning. It would seem that if there's a big name that enters the transfer portal here over the next couple of days, you can kind of bet that Oklahoma is going to be involved in some regard. Yeah, and you know because of OU's postseason run you know for people that don't know this window closes monday yeah it's june, crazy june 17th because we already have gone almost a full month since the beginning of postseason and that's when the transfer window starts so yeah you only have a, a few more days to announce we've heard from multiple sources one that o, that ou feels like it's done these these were the three i don't expect it'd be massive surprise if someone else announces during the next couple of days and the other thing look out nationwide there are going to be some big names that are going to enter and again you just know with the championship pedigree with love's field with everything that comes with it if ou wants to be a player they will be involved just as like a kind of a side note just to show an example of how quickly this thing goes Ruby Malin from uh, Washington has already signed with Tech, with Oklahoma State, who brought her in during the Super Regional. That was nearly two weeks ago. They brought in an NC State catcher. There are some big names. I don't know about particular names, but there it, it's expected from a national perspective that there are going to be some big names in the portal here over the next couple of days. It's going to be interesting. I know that the Kennedy thing is always it's I always like going to be out. It's there. always going to be and there. Keegan Rothrock was is always going to be. Out. Is that out there as well? <laughs> I'm interesting. sure. Interesting. Interesting. I I I think Florida has the most talent. I, sure. I I don't think she leaves, but people just gravitate toward the freshman pitcher that does well against o, OU on a big big stage. Bring her to Norman. Let's, let's make this happen. I think I think Patty Gas would be okay with that. In terms of we were talking about this before we started in terms of how they use that those five portal additions. It sounds like it would be easy to say one outfield, one infield, two pitcher and one catcher where there is a massive need, it feels like, with Kinsey Hansen departing. That's the strangest thing, right? You'd love that you had Kinsey for all those years, but what, you basically lost Sophia Nugent, Jocelyn Erickson because of it. Right. Not not much you can do. That's the way that it worked out. So now you have to restock the uh, catcher spot. You look at the pitching rotation. Peyton Monticelli, Kirsten Deal. That's it. I mean, they're bringing one in, but that's it. So uh, all of a sudden you go from all these names – that you've heard of for years and years to just those two. So, you know, you've got to hit the pitchers when it comes to the uh, portal and then just 
best talent available. I think you start looking from that point forward. But yeah, these next couple of weeks, I, I wonder if maybe Patty and the staff take this week off or so to give themselves some R and R and then maybe next weekend decide, okay, now it's time to start bringing in some visitors and trying to make this happen. I think when the, uh, the phone number rings and it comes from the four Oh five <laughs> and you're a softball player in the portal, you probably are going to answer it regardless of when that time comes just in closing with uh, you know everything that went into this season, we talked about this a little bit after the championship series, just in terms of it seemed like this one was maybe enjoyed a little bit more because it was the fourth consecutive. It was unprecedented last year. It just felt so weird because that the, the winning, streak, everything that loomed like, with, the, yes. with the winning streak, it was almost a, a, a sigh of relief more than it was yep. a celebration. It felt like this was more of a celebration. You saw, uh, I think it was Alana Torres put out the, uh, the tweet with Patty Gasso and the, uh, the handkerchief or whatever, uh, the do rag at the street corner. Uh, Kenzie Hansen took a run at some people that, uh, you know, there was a lot of narrative out there on Oklahoma softball. And there usually is because they have been so good and everybody's a little sick of it. But at the same time, it seemed like this one was really embraced. Yeah. I mean, and it was hard. Like that, that was what was kind of funny is we heard Patty and the players talk all Thursday night, how hard the season was, but that was in contrast to Thursday night itself. They said it was so much fun. It's almost as if, like, they got to the spot. Now, let's go have fun. Let's go enjoy our final moments as a team together. And there just there was so much doubt. They did lose seven games, which sounds crazy for this, this type as of team. As bad as the season went, <laughs> they finished with seven losses on the year. I mean, it's, in, it's incredible. It's incredible. Those 10 seniors, especially the core five. I know a lot of people want to throw in Brito too. the core six that, that came along and just, you know, changed the game and why they brought the goats out to yeah. the Saturday celebration. It's just, it just feels like it's also a throwback in these freshmen that came in together with the transfer portal. We just, we just know the, half of that group probably wouldn't survive if it was in this day and age because that's just the way that college athletics is going to work. Yeah, it, it's incredible. And, you know, I, I think that, like, the, the lasting impression from that group of seniors is just every big moment, it seemed like, whether it be Kenzie Hansen two years ago hitting the home run in the Super Regional to basically extend the winning streak, the winning streak itself that is almost <laughs> like a, a footnote on everything else, and then all the numbers that were out there, uh, you know, over the course of uh, their career with 100 and I think it was like 135 uh, – what was it 135 shutouts or 135 run rules, 119 shutouts, dominance, just dominance, never getting and, shut out. And the out. stage that they did it on, it seemed like every time that they stepped into Oklahoma City and played at Devon Park or Hall of Fame Stadium, whatever they called it a year, a couple of years ago, they showed up and delivered in the most clutch, biggest moments. And you saw that throughout the entire week and a half in Oklahoma City this past year. Yeah, you you look at. Jada Coleman, which was a fantastic story against Florida because what she was bunting, she was, I'm not saying her confidence had dipped, sure, but she was at a point where now she's trying to bunt to try to make something to get herself going maybe. And then she ends up with the opposite field walk off in the eighth. It's just, there were just so on, on top many. of like the, the, at bat in the sixth, wasn't it? That yes, it was like, where she, that's the, the very that's first last at bat yes. ever, <laughs> like well, how deflating that is. And then she walks it off uh, two innings later. And then, T.R. Jennings starts off against Texas and lets people know, okay, we're not tired. We're not drained. We're ready. We're going to take this. We're in the top. You know, they got to be the visitor for that game sure. only. And it's like right away to see the doubt start being, you know, planted for Texas. Just a crazy, you know, three, four day stretch. I don't think that Mike White and Texas will be going too far. Seems like they might be the uh, the preseason number one. Florida's not going anywhere anytime soon as Oklahoma makes the move into the SEC. I think it's all 15 teams would have made the uh, yep. NCAA tournament this year. Yeah. Ridiculous. <laughs> I you, don't you look even at know. The, the, the final ranking today that came out, I think it was D1 softball. Yeah. Nine of 13. All in the SEC now. Nine with OU top. and Texas headed over there. It's incredible. Unbelievable run. Uh, Loves Field, the celebration seemed like that was unbelievable as well on Saturday night with uh, the bringing out of the goats. I heard that there were some uh, problems in the dugout as well. They, they weren't necessarily. Uh, trained for the, uh, for the for the loves field experience might need to get some diapers on them but uh it was unbelievable i mean we're sitting here yet again talking about a national championship team that you know i i think in all heart of hearts probably were the odds on favorite throughout the season but there were moments that yeah. was like i don't know if they, i mean patty said it 
Oh, yeah. You guys, after the just, uh, BYU just series. Good enough to win, but not good enough to be at the standard. I mean, it was something we heard a lot through April that Texas series gave them, if there's any, like, oh boy, do we have it in us sure. this year? That that was the moment, the first two games of Bedlam. But I just, I go back to it. I'm glad Alyssa Brito mentioned it leading up to it. That sixth inning on Sunday in Bedlam, the six, six run sixth, where. They just found themselves again, and we'd heard Patty say that a few uh, a few times throughout the year. So you didn't know if you could really believe it, but something about that sixth inning felt different. And as it turned out, it absolutely was. It's amazing that that comes in a, a series loss, like basically a getaway day. But yep. you're able to get through that one, and then uh, yeah, the rest was kind of history because it kind of felt like they had found themselves uh, over the course of that kind of I guess the last three weeks or two weeks of the season leading into the postseason. Awesome job this year on uh, softball. Appreciate it. Baseball uh, did not end as well as softball. We not make it, going to Omaha, Not man. making another trip up to the uh, to the uh, blue-collar boardroom this year. Sadly, Oklahoma does not make it out of the Norman Regional. UConn comes in over the course of uh, the Norman Regional, and they were just the better baseball team. Made every single play that you could think of. Whew. They were unbelievable. And then I had to laugh. Uh, they opened with a 24-4 loss. Uh, to uh, Florida State in, this, in the uh, Tallahassee Norman uh, Super Regional. But at the same time, that was more of what we saw in the second game with UConn, uh, getting it to extra innings, being a little bit mature yep. about it as well. They were unbelievable. Luke Broadhorse, uh, the Paul Tom- Tomorrow uh, kid at shortstop, Corey Morton. Like, those names are going to be kind of instilled in a lot of Unfortunately. OU baseball fans' minds. Uh, and the bats, they just kind of went quiet at the end of the year. And, uh, you know, at the same time, it's hard to – kind of separate the good from the bad throughout a season in which you had the first regular season Big 12 championship in uh, school history. You won 40 games for the second time in three years. You were a step away from the North, uh, from the Super Regional, getting to that final regional final game, uh, game seven. So uh, I'd still like what they have coming back. It's They, like softball, are going to have to hit the portal hard, have a good recruiting class coming in, but you are losing a number of guys. You know, I think of John Spikerman. You've probably seen him in the Oklahoma uniform for the final time. You've probably seen Jackson Nicholas in a Oklahoma <sighs> uniform for the final time. That feels time, weird. Which does feel weird. Like, it, it it's not hasn't been as long as, like, a Kenzie Hansen, but at the same time, it, felt, it feels like they've been around for that much long, or, I mean, for that much longer, uh, or, you know, just about the same amount yep. of years given uh, you know all the history and all the success that they've had in some of the big moments getting to uh, Omaha. Like Kendall Pettis is kind of, I guess, would be in that same regard as a guy that feels like you could just pencil him in in the left field and uh, you know somewhere down around six or seven in the lineup, and uh, he was just always going to be here. So uh, sad to see some of those guys go. That was a uh, tough press conference to sit through with Kendall Pettis mm-hmm. after the— uh, That's what Patty was talking about. The UConn Never loss. had to do that. Never had to do it. <laughs> it's, it's incredible, and it speaks to uh, kind of the success that that program has had. But uh, disappointing. But at the same time, like, I thought the atmosphere around yes. Eldell Mitchell, uh, the course of the Norman Regional, was absolutely phenomenal. You start watching some of these super regional games, whether it be in College Station or, you know, wherever across the XC, uh, the SEC landscape, Georgia on Monday night, even though they got beat by NC State. Hopefully they can keep some something in regard. Obviously, getting fans to the stadium is going to be uh, the biggest priority, but, like, I thought the tents and stuff out on the so berms cool. was awesome. If you could keep that around for big SEC weekends, I think it could be a really cool atmosphere moving forward. And you look up, and much like softball, you look up, and half the field half in Omaha field. is represented by SEC schools with an opportunity, or they had the opportunity to get a fifth on Monday night. Obviously, the ACC is well represented as well with four teams, uh, with NC State punching its ticket, winning in Athens on Monday night. So uh, just like softball, you better be ready because you be ready. you're entering a uh, conference that is, uh, you know, very, very good. I know that uh, somebody had put it out there, the SEC schools that, you know, County Oklahoma and Texas that had been to the uh, Omaha to the College World Series over, uh, you know, the, the most recent trip. Everybody outside of Missouri, 1964, okay. and Alabama, I believe it was 1998. Everybody has been there within the, and I think Georgia was 2002-ish maybe. Everybody else had been there within the last five years, which is just incredible. It's unbelievable. Fl- Florida is a great example of just pure dominance. They're now 9-0 and in Super Regionals. Uh, Squeaking in. They've gotten to <laughs> Omaha nine of the last 14 years for Kevin O'Sullivan's program, and I think it's just it kind of speaks to 
how good some of these programs are. Obviously, Old Miss won it in 2022. LSU won it last year. They get into a super regional this year, end up losing uh, to North Carolina. So it's a really good conference. I think everybody knows that. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to see how Skip Johnson and everybody kind of ushers into that new era. Does there feel like a spot or two that stands out with the portal? We kind of talk about that with sure. softball. We know a couple pitchers. Is, is it just kind of just who, whoever's out there that makes sense, got to get them. Yeah, and I think that, you know, obviously they're going to be focused on replacing John Spikerman in center field. It sounds like uh, maybe they end up going the JUCO route on that. Uh, I know that they're pretty pleased with some of the guys that they're bringing in from the junior college side of things. Uh, I think that, you know, when you start looking at the fielding positions, like how does a, a, Frederick, a Carter Frederick end up kind of uh, getting back into the swing of things? Obviously, he was hitting a lot of DH. Maybe he could stay in that role, and you look for somebody uh, to replace Michael Snyder as well as Anthony McKenzie on the uh, the corners. So uh, you have a good core, though. Jason Walk, Jason Will uh, Jackson Willits, those guys are going to be around for a long time. I know they're really excited about Carter Frederick and his development. Jacob Golston coming off of basically what it ended up being not necessarily a redshirt year right. because he didn't redshirt, but – Going into his second year, I think that that's going to be important from a development standpoint. But at the same time, it's going to be interesting to watch where Braden Davis ends up going in the Major League Baseball draft after the, the se successful season that he had. Both Witherspoon brothers, good news is they're both coming back. I mean, they're they're scheduled to come back. Kyson obviously is going to be moving into a bigger role than maybe even a Saturday role in the uh, weekend rotation. Maybe Kyson ends up. Uh, or Malachi, excuse me, ends up moving into the weekend rotation, which, uh, you know, was kind of interesting how they used him at the end of the year, basically being a closer, thought he right. could get more innings. So uh, th the good news is both those guys aren't draft eligible. So I guess that is some pretty good news for Oklahoma moving forward. You have a bunch of guys coming back. It's going to be based and contingent upon where a bunch of these guys go in the draft. And maybe a Jackson Nicholas ends up not liking where he ends up going in the draft and maybe he thinks about coming back for a senior season. So I think John Spikerman, all intents and purposes, I think he's going to be a pretty high round draft pick. Not necessarily first or second, but I think anywhere from that third through fifth, I think uh, teams can find somebody with a ton of speed, really good power, and a really good arm from uh, center field. So it was, uh, it was all in all, if you would have asked me, uh, you know, going all the way back into February, middle of February, when we went down and covered the uh, the opener against o Oregon, who ended up going as far as you could go with, uh, with without making it to Omaha, making it to a super regional. If you would have said that they were going to host a regional, win 40 games, and win the Big 12 regular season, I don't know a single person that wouldn't have signed yep. up for that. Skip Johnson, yet again, another really good season, uh, getting uh, you know Oklahoma to 40 wins for the second time in three years. I don't think that that should be lost on anybody, as disappointing as maybe that end was. So, really good, uh, really good year on the diamond for both OU and uh, uh, OU baseball and OU softball. Obviously, uh, the softball team they're just the the preeminent <laughs> program right now in college athletics. They really are. It's funny when because they get they're what the enemy, the, yeah. the evil. Empire. Oh, I mean they have a chance if <laughs> things were to break right. And I've kind of become obsessed with this idea. Yes, he has. If things were to break right, they could become like the ultimate sports villain in college <laughs> athletics if they were to go out and get whomever from the portal that would come in and make an instant impact as an All American. As Patty's addressed it a lot. He's like, I don't get it. He's like, you can say what you want, but when I go to sleep at night, I know what type of program I'm running. I know what type of women are in my program. You can just keep talking. That's yeah. fine. Which which makes it even more like I think from the people on the outside, Gets make it more even mad. more mad that it's like, so they're not even like, they're not even cheating just a little bit. They're not getting robots to play the sport, which is, I guess, kind of fun. It'll be interesting to see how this whole thing uh, gets kind of reimagined, though, because there are going to be a ton of new faces over at Love's Field. It's just the consistency, and I think a lot of it – I, I will look t toward the defense because that's what set them apart. Sure. The last two years, just watching that defense has been so sensational. It's like, this is why they're as good as they are. And then the one thing that lacked from Texas, if Texas really wants to make strides next season. If it be in that area, if they want to, they want to work for it. There's still room to grow where OU was just so much fun to watch. Yeah, it was awesome. Plenty of stuff to uh, get into. Diamond Sports is now over. We enter somewhat of the summer months at Soonerscoop.com. A lot to uh, continue, though. Brent Benables football camp continues this week on Thursday. We got the uh, SEC 
rest of the schedule coming out on uh, Tuesday afternoon, which should be a lot of fun uh, to kind of, I guess, get a better sense of where everything is going to be uh, once we get into the fall. And then obviously... Uh, There's a lot of flex, but at least now you kind of know your time window. Sure. Uh, you're going to be happy with it, I yes. would think, if you're an Oklahoma football fan. And then uh, about a month away, literally about a month Media. away, SEC Media Days, which is kind of the at initial like Kickstarter into uh, what is going to be an unbelievable fall uh, in you know August and September. And we're close to the SEC party. That's crazy. J- July 1st. The official, official. It feels official, but it's not official. I don't know. It's, it's going to be kind of, uh, kind of cool. And we've signed George up to run the 5K. Uh, in Norman on uh, Sunday night, the night before Paul Feinbaum arrives. So for Bob Prisbill, I'm Eddie Radosovich. We'll see you right back here, maybe sometime soon, for the a little bit of a uh, softball diamond stickball portal report because as we kind of laid out there, it's going to be a very interesting next couple of weeks watching the portal for Oklahoma softball. We'll talk to you next time.